Many people start their day with different things on their mind, like what to wear, check their social media, work, and how much money they can make. Not putting God first and suddenly, in a moment, they will die, and the people will be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty will be taken away without a hand. This is why you need the Midnight Prayer. Hello friends, a blessed morning to all of you. It's now uh, midnight and three minutes, three minutes past zero hours. And we are going to be making the prayer for the country, for the nation. And uh, you know we have been going through serious problems in the nation because we have this virus that has been spread all over the nation and also the lockdown. People, they have been afraid of two problems now. They have the virus and they have the financial lockdown. Many people have been working for so many years and yet never had a raise of pay, yet never had a promotion. There are people who are working they have a job, they work in a restaurant. They were supposed to have their restaurant already, but yet they're still working for someone. In the other hand, the rent that this person has paid for all those years, this person could have his or her own house. But why? Because this pandemic came and it has affected more people who do not possess anything. It has affected less those who possess. And it has not affected at all those who, like Abraham, they have been faithful to God. And to those who are faithful to God, God will make them a possessor. God is not going to allow them to be working uh, so many years without a promotion. So many years without a raise of pay. So many years paying rent and they could have paid already one or two houses with that amount. Exactly. Once the person, they have the blessings of the possessor, the person don't need to worry anymore. And it is exactly what God, he promised to them. For those who will put their trust in God, those who will become like Abraham to have these blessings in their lives. So friend, we are going to pray for the nation, yes. But also we are going to be praying for God to open your mind and your understanding for you to know, for you to learn that you are supposed to become a possessor and not to be possessed, not to be owned by others, not to be in the hands of others, but for you to have your own possessions. Let us talk to God now. If it's possible, please close your eyes. My God, this nation has been going through serial situation. At first, it was the terrible violence that has claimed the lives of many innocent people, the lives of many sons, husbands, wives, daughters, mothers, that have my Lord claim the life of plenty other innocent people. Now we need your help to stop the violence. Yes, we do. But besides the violence, now God, we have this virus that is spread all over this country. And to make matters worse, we have a third problem that is called financial problems. Many businesses have closed doors. We have, my Lord, almost 400,000 people, Trinidadians and Tobagonians out there, that they want to return back home and they cannot. They left this country seeking for a better life and they could not find, or better say, they found, but also as the pandemic came, it also hit them so bad out there. So God, I pray on behalf of those that father they have been paying rent for their whole life and they could have their own houses those that my lord they have been working for people for so long not even one raise of pay not even a promotion 
situation has been getting so hard for them. I ask you, Father, to open the mind, open the understanding of this person. For this person, my Lord, to be like Abraham and become a possessor. Abraham was not owned by no one because you were with him and you made of him a possessor. We want you to make of us a possessor. Bless this nation. Bless the prime minister, the president, all the other ministers of this country. Those that have been doing their very best to stop this killer, this terrible and invisible enemy that we have been fighting against since lately March this year. God bless and open the mind of those who are tired and fed up to be owned by landlords, to be owned by others. And now they want to become possessors. We bless them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we surrender all into your hands. And those of you who believe, say Amen. Amen. Praise God. So friend, we have come to the end of our prayer, our participation here now on YouTube. But we are going to be back with you this morning. Pastor Marcos is going to have the workers prayer at 5. And also at 5 p.m., I am going to return with uh, our program, The Strong Nation. For now, have yourself a very blessed night. See you. My name is Tiffany, and before coming to the Universal Church, my financial life was a mess. We grew up in poverty. We had a very, very difficult time in terms of our financial life growing up. We were dependent on other people. We were dependent on our neighbors. We didn't have enough money to buy food, to buy clothes. We were always at the mercy of other people growing up. And this is how I grew up, always thinking that, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. Everybody else was prospering. Everybody else, families, they were working, enjoying life. And I just thought that this is how we had to be because it had always been that way and things didn't appear to be getting any better for us. So I grew up thinking that, you know, I will always have to be dependent on somebody, that somebody will always have to help me out, that I can never achieve anything for myself financially. And this is the mindset that I had in terms of, you know, even when I became a teenager, a young adult, thinking that I would forever be dependent on somebody and I, and I would always be in poverty, always be in want because that was my reality from day to day. So in hearing about the Universal Church from my mom, she came first and she invited me to come. And in starting to come to the Universal Church, again, I was, my situation was the same. Um, I was dependent on my family members, dependent on my sisters, um, financially, for food, for shelter, for everything. Um, even so much as for, to just get around, I was dependent on other people. I had no sort of income, no sort of financial life at all to talk about. But I came to the church and I started to pay attention about what the pastor was talking about tithes. So he was explaining that you have to put God first. Even though you may think that you have nothing, even though you may not be working, even though that you have no sort of income coming forward, um, you have to put God in the first place in your financial life. You have to remember God in everything. And at first hearing it, it, it seemed impossible for me because I was like, I don't have any job. I'm dependent on the people around me. You know, how could I be faithful to God? How could I return the, my first 10% when I have nothing coming in? So looking around me, I saw other people putting it into practice. I saw other people's testimonies of how their financial life grew by being a faithful tither. So that is when I decided that I would put this to the test in my life because my situation couldn't get any worse. I was still out of, a, out of a job. I was still dependent on those around me. So I decided that whatever 
finances, whatever money came into my hand, I would separate the first 10% to be a faithful tither, to see the change in my financial life. So I began to do that. It was not easy. And I used to look at how much I was separating and I say, well, Tiffany, this doesn't make any sense. But then I would remember what the pastor would teach us and say that it doesn't matter the amount, but the fact that you're putting God first and remembering God in even a small amount of money that you would receive. So I began to do it and I began to remain faithful because I had it inside of me that I wanted to see this blessing in my life. So as I continued to be a faithful tither, I saw my financial life growing. So I went from being dependent on others to having my own job, having my own income coming in so I didn't have to be dependent on my family members anymore for food, for traveling around. And then my life just grew from there. So I was able to, I was able to afford the things that I needed, you know, food, going to Pennywise, you know, getting around. I was able to see my financial life developing to the point where I no longer was dependent on other persons. Right, I started to get a good jobs and applying, uh, being a faithful tither, asking God to open the doors for me and I saw the doors opening in my, in my life, in my financial life. So now I, I keep determining, I kept determining inside of me that I had to take possession of my blessing. So I went forward with this faith and doors have kept opening for me. Until today, I can say that I have my own vehicle, right? My husband and I, we have our own business. And I also, you know, I'm in a career that I enjoy, that I, I love to do. And I could also say that even during this time of the pandemic, I was able to get a raise. So I see God continuing to open the door for me because of being a faithful tither. And because that I have remained faithful to him and putting him first in my finances. But above everything else, I have my greatest possession, which is the Holy Spirit. My greatest possession now is the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit inside of me, I have the strength to overcome any situation that I face. I have peace, I have joy, and I have my salvation. I have the assurance of my salvation. I wake up every day with the strength of the Holy Spirit inside of me to face any circumstances, any problems that come my way. And I remain in peace. I remain protected. I remain inside of the Holy Spirit that gives me strength to continue to overcome, to continue to keep going forward. As I have been a faithful tither and put in God first, the same thing can happen to you once you put God first in your financial life.